Hello, everyone, and congratulations, and welcome to your last video in our 28-day challenge series of Leading in the New Normal. Today, we're going to cap off our week and the series with talking about change leadership. In other words, how can you as a leader actually be responsible for bringing a change effort to your community? So remember yesterday we talked about communities of complaint and when you're running into that or any kind of problem or any kind of opportunity, how can you best lead folks through change? So there are a lot of different ways of cutting this uh, and understanding change management. And the one I'm gonna bring you, introduce you to is a very simple, uh, very simple way of looking at, and a powerful way of looking at change. So I wanna introduce two concepts to you. So the first concept, is something called the change equation. The change equation basically says when we're thinking about change, we can think about four different factors that we're gonna call A, B, D, and X. And basically what the equation says is that when the dissatisfaction with the present conditions added to the desirability of the change, added to the practicality of the change, when all of that together is uh, qualitatively um, greater than the cost of the change, then you have a pretty good chance that the change effort will be successful for the individual. Again, so for me to fully support a change effort, let's, let's say you're leading a change effort in my community, I need to be have some dissatisfaction with the present condition, I need to desire the change, it needs to be practical, and all of that needs to be greater than what I perceive as the cost of the change. So this actually gives you a great roadmap, something to think about with your change efforts as you're leading them. You know, how dissatisfied are people with the present condition? How desirable is the new change? How practical is the change itself? And that may be, give you some good indication for what you need to buffer up or explain or bring people into understanding <clears throat> because you really want the balance of the thing for people to have their own innate desire to move forward. Um, so you want, sometimes you have to get in there and, and really help people understand why it's a good change or why it's desirable or all those things. We wanna overcome people's sense of what the cost of change is. So use this, use this change equation to best understand how to, how to lead change efforts. And the second thing is to think about leading the change effort at five different levels. So the first level is we wanna model the change, meaning that you as the leader, you want to really drink in what the change is. Let's say that you are looking to, um, as a community, let's say as a community of activists, you're looking to uh, get, um, to, to do more work in driving policy change. So what you need to do is to model that change. So are you bringing that up in everything that you do and say? Are you bringing resources to the front that you value that actually helps support the change? So model the change. Secondly is communicate about the change. So maybe that goes without saying, but what I will tell you is if you're not communicating about the change in six different ways, you are probably missing the mark with some people. So that's the magic number for, um, for communication that is vital. Uh, when you're commuting a vital piece of communication around the change, you wanna really communicate it in six different ways. Challenge yourself to figure out six different ways. There's email, there's written correspondence, there's saying it, there's video, there's uh, getting the message to go through other people. Find six different venues, ideally that appeal to different learning styles. Number three is involve others in the change, bring people into the conversation, continue to involve them. People own what they feel a part of. So make sure that you get folks to be a part of it. Fourth is to create a supportive learning environment. So what can you do on a regular basis so that people feel like they are actually learning and that they feel supported in that learning? And then lastly is help others break from the past. And that's a biggie, right? So whether it's through ritual, you know, I often talk about it. it's like, it's like the it's like when you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend back in high school that broke your heart. One of the best things you can do is take a picture of that person, light it on fire and throw it into a trash can. There's a symbolism and a finality to that. So your job as a leader is to help others break from the past in order for them to move forward. So consider those five levels as you're thinking about how to lead the change effort. And your homework today, your last piece of homework, is I want you to think about three different things with a change effort that you're involved in right now, with a community that you're involved in right now, 
And how can you think of, what are three different things that you can do to help others break from the past? Things that you can actually do tomorrow or the next day, but really don't say five weeks from now, I'm gonna do this. See if you can pick something that you can do tomorrow to help folks break from the past and move your change effort forward. All right, folks, thanks so much. It was so great uh, connecting with you. Look forward to future connections. Uh, and thanks again for uh, being a part of our 28-day cha leadership challenge series of Leading in the New Normal. This is Danny Ceballos. And speaking for Danny Ceballos and Christina Rowe, it was wonderful, wonderful having you, seeing you, and being a part of your, your leadership learning journey. All right, take care. Bye now.